Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to FNAF News Roundup. It's been a bit since we've done a Roundup News video, just because there's been a lot going on. And even if we got news, the majority of it was pretty small, and it, there, there just wasn't enough to make a full video on it, so I've collected a lot of information, um, and it's gonna be all in this video. There should be timestamps on the timeline of the video, so if you just want to skip to a certain section, of course, you can go ahead and do that. But no matter where you go in the video, I really hope you enjoy it. And if you do, why not consider liking and subscribing? Just saying. These Roundup videos actually do take quite a bit of time to make because there's so much information and I need to put up a lot of images on screen to show you guys, so I would really appreciate it if you guys subscribed. So starting off, we have some news regarding Help Wanted. On October 29th, Steelworld Studios tweeted out, has your clock struck midnight yet? With a picture of Glitch Trap um, in Pizza Party in the minigame, and he is faded over the Xbox logo. This was to hype up the release of Help Wanted on Xbox One that night, and it did come out and you can get it right now. I made a video on this topic previously, and a lot of people were saying that it, it wasn't in their store that day, and this is the reason why, was because it released at midnight that night. So. They were really cutting it close. Then, Stuart also tweeted out on October the 31st, Happy Halloween! Keep it spooky with this image. And let me just say, I fucking love this. You have Montgomery, Roxanne, Chica, and Freddy all turned into jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, and you got Fanny behind them. It looks so god dang good. I don't know who the artist is over at Stuart who did this, but like, round of applause because this is incredible. And you even have a reference to the moon animatronic with the crescent moon before the happy and happy Halloween. It's such a nice image, man. While we're talking about security breach, uh, we did just enter November. Right now it's the third. And since we've entered into November, we only have two months left. For security breach to come out in 2020, if that's still going to be the case. A lot of people are throwing out dates, like the launch date for um, PlayStation 5, which I believe is November the 12th, and some people are saying it's not going to be out until 2021. I would like to remind you guys, there is no set confirmed release date for this game yet. Steelwall has not said anything, and most websites cannot be truly trusted. Believe what you want, but I'm out here saying there was no set release date for this game yet, so don't take, you know, a release date on a game website as 100% fact. Going back to Xbox, FNAF 1, 2, 3, and 4 were all released on the Game Pass on the 30th. Flick Team provided this screenshot of Freddy, Withered, Foxy, Springtrap, and Nightmare Bonnie for us. And honestly, it's really cool to see FNAF in the Game Pass. I personally don't have it, but I know a lot of people probably do. However, I bet a lot of Xbox FNAF fans probably already bought those games, so but hopefully people can enjoy the first four games on the Xbox Game Pass because, I mean, it's a, it's a great opportunity. You don't need to buy the games, all you need is the Game Pass, and you get the first four, right? That's a steal. Hopefully more FNAF games will be added in the future, like Sister Location, Pizza Sim, and Ultimate Custom Night, but we're just gonna have to wait and find out. On Halloween, Click Team also launched the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator port on Xbox and Nintendo Switch. It is yet to be released on the PlayStation 4, but Click Team says that it's coming very soon. And if you saw my video on it, you will know that there are a lot of bugs in the game, unfortunately, and Click Team has responded to that. They say, We appreciate everyone's feedback on the initial console release of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. Here is what we are working on for the first big update, for the next update. Fixed issues with liability stagnation, fixed unlimited money exploit, added more D-pad controls throughout the game, restored some missing sounds on Switch, fixed Candy Cadet, fixed mediocre achievement on Xbox One, fixed unlimited playtest exploit. We will keep you informed as to the progress of these changes. Sincerely, Click Team. I really do hope that they can get this um, patch out very soon because that is a lot of major bugs. Honestly, I really do want the unlimited play tokens and infinite money in the game as a cheat option. It's probably the closest we are ever going to get to the endless tycoon mode that Scott alluded to back in like, god, 2018, I think. Because even though it is game breaking, it was a lot of fun. Obviously, I do want them to fix all of these, but I'm just saying, Click Team, if you're watching this, you should add that as a cheat option because that is. So much fun. Really, it is. And much to everyone's surprise, Flumpties actually came out on Android recently. On Halloween, they provided this image on Twitter, and I mean, we all knew what was coming. And then later that day, we actually did get One Night at Flumpties trailer for Android. 
you can get one dine at flumpty's one on android and soon to be ios but we'll get to that later for only two bucks when you compare it to the other ports it is a dollar cheaper which is very nice actually and it does make sense because it is only one night at flumpty's i'm not sure if all the other ports will be 199 i have a feeling they'll probably go up to 299 just because there's so much more content and just like pizza sim on consoles we're going to have a patch coming to flumpty's on mobile very soon jonachrome the creator of flumpty's had this to say on twitter one night at flumpty's one mobile's infinitely looping ending issue will be patched soon not today but hopefully tomorrow or the next sorry about that I actually want to explain why I think the looping ending issue is happening only because it's funky. The ending is a large 8 frame sprite and the game is programmed to return to the title screen after the sprite reaches its 9th frame which doesn't exist. In Game Maker Studio 1 this worked just fine, but part of the porting process has involved transitioning the game into Game Maker Studio 2 which handles code a little differently. So instead of registering a 9th frame the game loops the sprite back to frame 1. If I'm right what a small and unexpected change. Should be an easy fix though. Shrug emojicon. And earlier today, ClickTeam provided an update on Flumpty coming to iOS devices. Today, Apple rejected our release binary of One Night at Flumpty's. We have a few additional paperwork items that need to be filed with Apple. I am working with the team to get them submitted today. Once done, we should be able to resubmit and get it released to you. We appreciate your patience as we work with Apple to get this completed. Also, I am still a cactus. Sincerely, ClickTeam. Short, sweet, uh... God dang it, Apple, why you gotta do this to me? I don't have an Android device, so I do have to wait for it to come out on iOS, but when it does come out, you betcha I'm gonna be playing it. It is a big time for Click Team right now. Uh, you know, pizza sim release on consoles, you have the Game Pass with the first four games, you have, you know, One Night at Flumpty is coming out, they're probably, hopefully, still working on UCN for consoles and, um, just consoles at this point. So they have a lot on their plate, boys, so keep that in mind. Moving on to some Illumix and FNAF AR news, of course we all know Plus Trap just came to the game last week, and they have already released merchandise for him because of course they have. The products went up yesterday, and let me just say, honestly, some of it is looking pretty good. You have t-shirts, you got stickers, you have mugs, you have posters, you have charms, whatever that is, you have masks too. It all looks very cool, and I definitely will be getting some. The merch will no longer be available on the 8th of November, so if you want to get some, I suggest acting fast. And some news that I don't see a whole lot of people talking about, unfortunately, because it was very exciting, was the Fan Games at Freddy's Livestream event that happened on Halloween. There was a lot of fan games in there, some of them just being announced in the stream, and some of them just receiving new trailers and information. Games like Tealer Land, Graveyard Shift at Freddy's, Whoppy and Friends, The Pilot Episode, Compute Tech, The Original location, The Twisted Carnival, Ellie's, Junior's, Chompers 1996, and Honey Bear's Fantasy. And probably, I mean no offense to any of the creators, but probably the biggest thing to be announced was FNAF Power Out. What seems to be a reimagining of FNAF 1 being made by Games Productions, it looks freaking incredible like I said, and I really hope Scott won't take it down. I really hope Games Productions has some ties with Scott to be able to make this game because you know we've seen Scott take down reimaginings before so hopefully this is not gonna be taken down because it looks good and games productions has been working very hard on it it has its own twitter page i'll link it down below go follow see the progress on the game and really go follow all the games i i listed out because there's there's a lot of good ones there i'm not gonna link every single one i'll link the live stream and on the live stream there's links to all the games so again Go check them all out. And speaking of FNAF reimaginings, ooh, clean segue, I'm on a roll. Fiznom has put out teaser images for FNAF Plus. And let me just say, you guys have probably seen them before, but if you have not, you are in for a treat, a trick or treat. This is goddamn amazing. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Freddy Fazbear, the brand new Freddy Fazbear. He looks so cool. He's wearing pants. Before we talk about Freddy himself, quickly behind him, you can see the reimagined stage. That looks freaking good. And now let's talk about the big bear himself. Dang, dang, dang. What else can I say? This looks so good. Really reminding me of the old Chuck E. Cheese, Charles Entertainment Cheese himself, where he has his vest, he's got his bow tie and his top hat, and he's got pants. I don't know why he has pants, but Freddy pants is a thing now, Freddy Faz pants. I really, really love this reimagined design of Freddy. I'm not gonna lie at all. I think it looks freaking incredible. The the movable fingers are scaring me a bit, how the fingers are in segments so he can move his fingers one by one. The mouth looks terrifying. The belly, big old chubby 
belly of Freddy Fazbear. Microphone looks on point. Really, this whole model looks absolutely incredible, and it gets me very excited for what the other models are going to look like. That was not our only teaser for FNAF Plus. We actually got two more. One of what appears to be a hallway corner camera. Based off the angle of the camera and how the letters are printed, it seems like this is the east hallway. And I think I can see a wall on the right side, or that's a door frame, so this could be the east hall corner. The poster looks freaking incredible. Very, very similar to the original FNAF 1 poster, but of course with the reimagined Freddy. You still have the monitors in the hallway, you have papers across the, um, across the wall. You have the same wall design of the checkerboard pattern with the red stripes above and below them. And let me just say, guys, guys, this thing looks great. I'm sorry, I can't hold it back anymore. I am so unbelievably excited for this game. Like, the more I see of this game, just the more I get excited and I cannot wait for more info though again this is a big game it's a big project we gotta give phil some time but who has time when we have missing people to find that's right this is the third and final teaser for this game it appears to be the storage room it looks like we have a lost and found bin with a lost and found checklist i don't know what that is like are you listing the things in lost and found are you having people check out what they take from lost and found i don't know what that is but again we have a missing persons poster what could that be i don't know we have inanimate mr hugs we have some cleaning supplies a balloon we have some pizza boxes a bucket uh looks like some more tv monitors and probably a mop and again some more um papers on the wall i would like to remind people that this is not a official fnaf reimagining even though it is, it's complicated, all right? This has new lore, it's different lore from the first game, so we're not getting new FNAF lore. This isn't official. You could say it doesn't tie in to the main games made by Scott. This is Phil's game, and it's his gonna it's gonna be his own lore. Anyways, our final thing is Fazbear Frights book number nine. It has a official title and an interesting description. So the title is FNAF Fazbear Frights number nine, the puppet Corver. Originally, uh, people found out it was going to be called the Pupper Corver, which doesn't sound too friendly because it sounds like we're carving into a doggo. But rest assured, it is the Puppet Corver, which is an interesting name because we may or may not have a puppet or two in the FNAF franchise. Of course, you have the puppet, you have security puppet, you have all the other var variants of the puppet, you have the Minorinos, which could be considered puppets as well, you have the Magician and Little Joe, which again, are technically puppets. So it's going to be very interesting to see which puppet they're talking about here. I'm guessing it's probably the big main puppet himself, herself. Anyways, so the description is not finalized, but this is what it says right now. From twisted toys to gut-wrenching games, this collection of terrifying tales is unsettling enough to mess with even the most hardened FNAF fans. In this volume, series creator Scott Cawthon spins three sinister novella-length stories from different corners of FNAF's canon. Each story comes complete with accompanying artwork by a fan-favorite game artist to bring the horror to life in a new way. Readers beware, in this startling world, desperate wishes have an unexpected cost. Beautiful trinkets reveal appalling powers, and harmless pranks can go away in ghastly ways. Yeah, it's very interesting because if you've seen my other videos on the uh, Fazbear Frights books, usually they all end with this kind of copy and paste message. Three sinister novella length stories from different uh, corners of the canon, uh, accompanying artwork by fan favorite artist Lady Fizzy. It says all that stuff like that. You know, readers beware, it's enough to unsettle even the most hardened FNAF fans, but this one is slightly different, and I don't know if that was intentional, or if they just kind of mushed it all together. Desperate wishes, um, I don't know man, <laughs> someone's gonna be making, making a wish all Aladdin style, it's probably gonna go wrong. Beautiful trinkets reveal appalling powers, I don't know what that could mean, I guess we're gonna be dealing with some superheroes, um, and harmless pranks, we've heard of that before, some pranks. Um, can go Ari? Did I even say that word? I don't think I said that word when I was reading the description. What the heck? In ghastly ways. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Ghastly, ghosts, ghouls, I, don't, I got nothing. We need more details on this, so that is all the news we have so far. There's no cover, um, just yet. But when there is, I will, of course, make an update video about it. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. To the end, boys, subscribe if you haven't for some reason. And I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye. Gregory, be still. I think she's found us.